So, so what we've been talking about, or what you guys have been talking about, is the the financial either dislocations or misallocations going on as a result of um, government or Fed policy, and but also that in this crisis that the willingness to yeah let's let the Fed do whatever they want. So that's on more on the financial side. Now, if we put it on the more the sort of production trade um, and exchange of goods and so on, not just financial services, the financial markets, obviously there's a similar thing going on now that government can, but here it's not, it's shutting down massive amounts of things. And so obviously individual people are struggling. If your restaurant um, is either shut down or all you can do is take out. So, so it's, a, it's a, at an individual level and it's not distributed equally. There's right. massive dislocation, but now thinking of it as sort of a little more economy wide, both short term, given all the I mean, we live in a global environment, incredible division of labor and specialization. And if some parts start shutting down or can't or not allowed to function, it's not like it's just, OK, that's no longer going on. It has all kinds of ramifications for the whole economy and production. So yeah. both thinking short term. But also thinking longer term, and people are asking, so we've been talking about some of sort of, of what has happened, of what are possible scenarios of what might happen or continue to happen, given what's being done. And you can't get any kind of clarity. I mean, because I think just as the Fed, you were talking about that they don't know what they're doing. It's not clear any of these, these government officials have any idea what they're doing. When would they lift? Like when would people get back to production? So so both so there's incredible uncertainty, but also incredible halt in productive activities. And how both are you guys thinking about that? But how do you think the market's reacting to that too? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just incredible, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So you know, some of the numbers that you see um, next week's unemployment number is supposed to be three million new unemployed. This was one estimate um, at the peak of the or the nadir of the 2008 crisis. I think it was 800,000 new unemployed in a week. So, I mean, this is just off the charts. Um, there's layoffs that have happened and are coming. So I've seen numbers as high as 6 million or even 9 million people laid off for the duration of however long we're shut down. And that you mean US? US, this yeah. is just US, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Goldman Sachs, their forecast for second quarter GDP, gross domestic product, so the production, they're forecasting minus 24% in GDP. Um, which I mean, that's depression levels. Like that's that's not recession. That's just instant stoppage it's depression. depression. Level. Absolutely. So, you know, what are the consequences? The big issue is that the cash flows have been frozen. So, you know, to some extent, you still have to pay. You have to pay your bills. You have to pay your mortgage. You have to pay interest on your loans, um, whatever other fixed commitments you have. But you don't have the revenue coming in. So, if you're an individual, you may not have a salary or wages coming in. If you're a company, if you're a restaurant or retail store, you don't have the sales revenue coming in. So, you know, I fear for retail stores and small business. They typically operate on very thin margins. They don't have a lot of cash cushion. Um, if we stay shut for two months, I don't think a lot of restaurants are going to reopen. I think a lot of retail stores are just going to be gone out of business. Um, so, you know, even two weeks, they're going to be in tough shape. So how, you know, how bad it is based on how long we stay shut, I don't know. I don't think government people know either. So you know, in some sense, it's been kind of cavalier, just the ham-fisted way they've said, shut down everything. Um, so yeah, there was another point I was gonna make as well. Um, oh yeah, so the cash flow issue, you know, and so the, I mean, there's the, the policymakers are aware of that to some extent. So this is why they're coming up with their programs to send a thousand dollar check to every adult and to, um, I think one program was to give money to companies to allow them to pay sick leave for two weeks. Um, so they're trying to adapt for that, but you know, what does that do exactly? And how, how, well, first of all, how soon is the money going to go out? So like, you know, some people are saying you know, Mnuchin, I think said he wants the money to go out in one to two weeks. Whereas the back office people, you know, the actual bureaucrats as well, it's going to take us like two to three months to get the money out there to people. So is that really going to have any effect? Should it have an effect? Should they even be doing that? Um, that's a good question too. I don't know. So in, in one sense, it's their fault for shutting everything down and putting people in this cash crunch. On another hand, you know, this is going to be a huge boondoggle. So they send thousand dollar check to every adult. They give you know money, free money to companies to you know, pay sick leave and so on. You know, what kind of graft and what kind of you know, it's just going to be a huge mess just to how that all that sorts out. Um, 
So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I think that's all. That's that's right. And I, I think the pain here is really going to be felt by the small business, small businesses. Yeah. I, mean, I think about people who put their whole life savings into a business, who put blood, sweat, and tears into a business that that work day in day out. I mean, a lot of people out there have run small businesses and been small business owners, and they know the kind of effort and, and, and they, they have everything in it and the margins are small. Take a restaurant, tiny margins, mm -hmm. even though they might be super restaurant, they might be phenomenal and customers love them and they're working long hours and, and suddenly they have no income, not because of anything they did. Yeah. And I mean, I think about the restaurants, you know, people know I, I love to eat out and I know a lot of the restaurateurs here in, in San Juan. And these are, these are people who are who put all their life into this. This is the passion, but it's also everything they own. And I can't, I mean, you know, I would, I'd be willing to go eat at their restaurants just to, just to support them right now. Yeah. And I'm not allowed to, and I'm not allowed to. And some of them are trying to do takeout. And I, I told my wife, let's just order takeout stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. really, because I yeah, love to order in sense, incredible value to me. I want them to be around when they, when, if, when we come out of this and but they can't, not all of them can even do that because it takes a lot of money and a lot of resources to facilitate takeout, which, which, and there's not a lot of demand for it, unfortunately, because most people are just staying home and cooking. Um, so it's, it's, it really is tragic. And this is the thing. It's so easy to lose the real pain and suffering in the aggregate numbers. Yeah. GDP goes down by 20%. That sounds awful. Mm -hmm. What's really awful. I mean, what, what maybe makes it awful is the millions and millions and millions of people who auto work, the millions and millions of people who are gonna lose their businesses, the millions and millions of people who are now gonna really struggle or just now become dependent on the government, which psychologically and in every other sense is somewhat even worse than going bankrupt, right? Um, it, it's, it's, it's just the, the pain and suffering this is gonna cause a lot of people. Now, a lot of us luckily are in a position, hopefully, where we're gonna weather this storm, but millions and millions and millions of people are not. Yes. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, Please take this opportunity. Go to youronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, youronbrookshow, and, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...